Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, Sarah Surrett here with Get Positive Dog Training, and I am chatting with you about picking out that perfect pet for you, and today we're gonna talk about pocket pets to see if these might be the perfect pet. So there are several different types of pets that fall under the pocket pet category, and I'm just gonna go over three. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about guinea pigs, hamsters, and mice. Now, I've had guinea pigs in the past, and when I was a little girl, I remember having mice as well. And what's cool about all three of these pocket pets, and they're called pocket pets because pretty much they can fit in your pocket. You can carry them around literally inside the space of your pocket. Maybe a sweatshirt pocket for the guinea pig because they are a little bit bigger. They're all in the rodent family. And, um, but the, the fun thing about all three of these are they're very smart little creatures. And so you can train them. You can train them from the get-go and they're all very affectionate. Um, so guinea pigs, the thing with guinea pigs is that they do make a little bit of noise. So they, when they're really happy and excited, they make a very high pitched squeal noise. So if that's not something that's gonna float your boat, then you might wanna stick to one of the next two that I'll talk about. Uh, guinea pigs also do better with a companion. So usually in pairs, they do better. Um, the other thing about guinea pigs is they do live anywhere from four to eight years of age. And if you don't stand on, stay on top of their, their cage cleaning, it can get a little stinky. So you do have to make sure, depending on how many you have and how large your cage is, that you're giving them enough space and that you're cleaning out that cage uh, frequently. The next one are hamsters. Now hamsters are cute little fellows. The thing about hamsters though is that they are nocturnal. So they'll tend to be awake when you're kids because they are a, a popular kid's pet. They'll be awake when your kids want to sleep. But hamsters are cute. They do better alone as a sole little pet. Um, but they are also uh, smart, intelligent, interactive, and they come, you can buy them in all sorts of different colors. They have long haired hamsters and short haired hamsters. So hamsters are fun, they're affordable. And then we have mice. Oh. And mice are great pets for um, children as well. As a matter of fact, mice are very social. They're very smart and they're quite interactive. The thing about mice is that they don't take up a lot of space and like hamsters, they're very fun to watch. So you can be entertained for hours by watching your pet hamster or your pet mouse, uh, you know, climb around their little jungle or their, their hamster wheel. You can teach them new tricks. So the hamsters are, are really great as well as the mice. They're, they're super cute. And again, they take up very little space. And they're, you know what? They're great first time pets if you have kids because there's not a lot of maintenance with these three pocket pets. They don't take up a lot of space and you can leave home, you know, on a, a short trip without having to worry about bringing them with you necessarily. So take a look if you are interested in a pocket pet sort of pet take a look at a little bit deeper into these. Now, again, with any pet, there is upfront costs for buying the cage, uh, buying food, buying uh, the, the stuff that goes in the cage. You can use either pellets or what is it? Like cedar pieces, cedar chips, wood chips, or hay. So there, and you still have to buy treats. And so there is some upfront costs for care. So you have to be prepared to spend anywhere from I'd say $75 to a couple hundred dollars in order to make this investment for this type of pet. So I hope this was helpful. And the last little factoid I wanted to share with you is about the guinea pigs. And I wanted to let you know, they're not from New Guinea and they have no relationship to pigs. So I'll leave you with that. And I hope you enjoy this and take care. We'll see you at the next video where we're gonna discuss a whole different um, category of animals that you might consider choosing for your perfect pet. Thanks for watching. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.